Hey everybody, welcome to Elseworlds Exchange. I'm Sal. And I'm Joel. We're starting about five minutes earlier than the scheduled thing said. Uh, I'm making up for all the times that I said we were going to start, and then we wait like 10 minutes, 20 minutes. <laughs> there, you're five minutes. You're welcome. Uh, this is a show where we take one topic, break it down, and then we just discuss it for about an hour. Welcome to the show. If you want to help us out, you can sponsor today's episode by using Super Chats, ask a question or comment. We'll read it here on the show and make it happen. And if you want to have an extra special bonus episode, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash comic pop, listen to Joel and I yammer on about something or other. This is actually born from that because we failed to record <laughs> the episode <Last laughs> that week. we did uh, from last week. And so uh, we're kind of making it into a full topic. We, the, the episode itself, when we were recording it or not recording it, uh, was pretty was already getting pretty substantial. So I was thinking to myself, like, man, it's too bad that we, we that it, like only a, only a select few are going to hear it. But uh, nobody heard it because uh, I screwed that up. <laughs> L- lucky for us, the topic only got bigger and more involved in the week that followed. So, hey, you know, making some lemonade out of lemons on this one. That's right. I would have felt like a, such a jackass to have, like, dedicated a show to this topic and then wait for all this new information to come out. Mm-hmm. Um, or at the very least, just 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 further data. Definitely, because yeah, we don't really have a lot of good new info as far as like the logistics or uh, or or the optics. But you know, the, these guys have made some significant. These guys, being Hollywood, have made some significant decisions, and uh, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about where superhero movies are going, and by extension, where cinemas are going, and and theaters, yeah. and 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 the the future of how we consume visual media. Mm. The answer may shock you. I doubt it. (laughs) No, nothing shocks me anymore. Not after this year. No, no, everything sucks. Um, (laughs) And it's funny. It's amazing to me because this is like representative of it's a larger problem. Uh, The the where we my my co-host Ethan is uh, more more of a pessimist than I am, Mm. which is hard to believe. Uh, And he believes that like we as a species are doomed more or less. Uh, and I would like to believe we're not, <laughs> but, uh, but it's hard to argue the counter to that point. Yeah, because, right. Like there's tech, like, because basically we haven't physically evolved enough to adapt to the technological changes that have taken place over the last hundred years. Oh, absolutely. Right. Like we're just, we're still like cave scratchers and we have like tactical nuclear missiles and streaming media. <laughs> we, we are nearing that science fiction dystopia where technology has grown ahead of us. And now there's algorithms that people don't understand that govern our lives that we say we understand, but we really don't, which was right. Literally what Westworld season three was about. I feel Hell, like a lot of people checked out on that show, but go further back, go to Jurassic park. It's just what Ian Malcolm said. It's like, you step on the sol- shoulders of geniuses, and uh, you, you you take what they had done, and and then you you took the next step, but you didn't earn any of that information. You didn't earn that knowledge for yourselves, so you have no you don't you don't have responsibility for it. Yeah, you know, and uh, and so here we are. And uh, th- th- my whole point about that is basically that we are at this place where it's like we can get media anywhere we want in any form we want. Yeah, and the people who ruined it are still in charge. Ain't that funny. So it just sucks. <laughs> little, little bit. You know what I mean? But they're also desperate for content. So like the content doesn't suck, but the, but everything about it, everything else about it is, is just, just trash. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, uh, and we're seeing this year too, that they can fail with the big colossal failure of Quibi. <laughs> Quibi, which is like, it, Quibi for me is emblematic of the of the issue I just said, which is just like this is what happens when you give you know like a, a, a Neanderthal an AK forty seven. You know, <laughs> you, it's just it's an old, outdated dinosaur who wants things to be old and outdated using technology and advantage that they absolutely don't understand, respect, or earn, and so as a result, they make Quibi. 
and also reading the tea leaves completely wrong to our oh, people have no attention spans. They want things that are short that they can watch on their phone in landscape or vertical. That's the way of the future. That's the way to go. And we'll give every comedian in LA a Quibi show is what we'll do. And we'll see how that goes for her. right. It's, it's just this desperate cling to relevancy where if you ask anyone under the age of 65, how people absorb media it's like yeah that's how i absorb like yeah the quibi model works for instagram videos and YouTube. pictures <laughs> youtube and even then like youtube doesn't know what people want they no. just they, they they just they just put it all in the hands of a, of a magical robot algorithm and go this is what people watch and it's like but yeah but what came first here? Like, what did you screw it up? And so people are forced to watch only this kind of thing <laughs> or, or vice versa. And it's like, that's where we are. So, so streaming media is, is another casualty of that where it's just Absolutely. everyone in charge of all these studios being like, Oh, okay. So, uh, permit me one other divergence because I said this on Instagram the other day live, sure. and I, I don't want it to be lost to the annals of history. Cause I was talking about how like Netflix, right? Like streaming media, the way we yeah. are, we have it today. Netflix, great idea when there's one, when there's yeah. one model. Because mm -hmm. Netflix is an aggregator. Netflix, oh, yeah. takes, I take all the shows and all the movies. I, put them I get it place. to you. There you have it. So Netflix could like never had to spend more than the infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, but when all these other studios went, oh, wait a minute, that's a model. Mm. and then took it netflix went from being a distribution house to being a content creator yeah. and so they're spending like money hand over fist to supplant all those different shows and movies that they lost and as a result like they're just they're just hemorrhaging money but what's funny is that became the model because the the only thing that works is one streaming service as it turns out yeah right because there's not enough there's not enough media for there to be 17 different streaming services and mm -hmm. and each studio doesn't make enough shit in order for there to be a, an exclusive Disney streaming service unless they're, like they're you trying. acquire Fox unless uh, you acquire other studios in fact, uh, what is it? Uh, there was news uh, this week that Disney uh, is thinking of trying to find a way to combine Disney and Hulu into one app for all families is the thing where it's like, oh, so Hulu and Disney Plus on their own aren't doing enough for you that you need to bring them together? Now, don't get me wrong. I would love if they brought that together. I'd love to be able to watch The Mandalorian and Pen 1-5 all in one fucking pl uh, place, please. Yeah. Well, I would like to get back to the Netflix model because that's what works. What doesn't work is me spending 8 to $12 a month on seven different services. Mm -hmm. and, and I also want to watch Ted Lasso. Where's that Apple TV? What the fuck is an Apple TV? Uh, it's a big fat waste of time and money with what it is. <laughs> But uh, but we're, we're this is all prelude, by the way. We're getting to the superheroes. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. But like, the world we live in is funny because like all of these groups that didn't have enough content to start mm. have to produce content, and so they're spending money on the infrastructure needed mm -hmm. to become a streaming service and to get into your homes and to get your eyeballs, and also create the content that they want you to watch, like. It'd be like being, it'd be like a kid being like, I want to sell lemonade, mm. but not lemons? having any lemons or water <laughs> or stand. And then being like, I built the stand. Crap. Right. What else do I need? Lemonade. Mm, like yeah. and just constantly going back to the store and buying shit and then filling up their supply. Like it, you, you need to think about these things a little more. And it's like these people who have like trillions of dollars to spend on this kind of shit. Don't think about this stuff. No, not like, at all. Why don't you think about this? You've been in this business long enough to know like why there are like two volcano movies or two natural disaster movies or, you know, like you can, you can sense trends. You can copy other people's formats, but like for some reason you also don't see the writing on the wall when it comes to, People don't have enough money to support you and you don't make enough stuff to support your own streaming service. It's also funny too, when they start spending money on a claim, like I'm sure people will notice in the last couple of years, uh, Netflix movies started getting nominated for more awards and, you know, you started seeing them places they didn't before, you know, how they got that, right? 
they spent a lot of money and you can like, you can track down a quote from their CEO. It's like, I was willing to spend whatever it took to have the Academy Awards and the yep. Oscars and everything and the Emmys pay attention to us. So he spent like, something ridiculous. I think he spent like $2 billion out of his own pocket just to grease the wheels, just to get them in there. And all I could think is like, so it's just that easy, huh? If I just right. have $2 billion to spend. Well, and that's the thing is that like, hopefully a lot of the resulting failures that are inevitable from this shift will change things for the better. And by that, I mean, force everything to regress back to like 20 years ago, mm. which like sucks because I don't believe in that. I truly do believe in like forward progression and advancement. Yeah. Don't look but back, I, but you're not going that way. But there's also something fundamentally messed up about being like, so in order for a movie to warrant being in theaters, it has to make at least a billion dollars because I spent $500 million. That's, like, that's the new paradigm. That That's that's so grossly irresponsible. And also it's, it, it is, it de-democratizes film. Oh God. Yeah. 100%. And so, you know, you, you've got that problem as well. But anyway, uh, we're, we're here to talk about superhero movies because like we're getting more and more, superhero media mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and really have you know it's not like this is a new thing but we're no, getting no. we're getting the new normal yeah i mean doom patrol what is like three years old now two three years yeah i guess and they didn't even get to finish that second season because of covid right but they will because yeah. because i have hbo max uh i got it when i set up something uh with another i got a new like uh, when i re up my phone plan they threw in hbo max for a year oh that's a good um, yeah, it sucks, and it has, like, nothing on it. Really? Nothing? Well, it has, like, Looney Tunes, but only select episodes from 25 mm. seasons. Like, it'll go, like, it'll be, like, season 18, episode 4, 9, 17, 26. Uh. Like, uh, wh where, where do those other episodes go? Oh, well, those have blackface in them or something. Mm, like, yeah. It, it, it's just, like, that's a lot of episodes. Um. It's and also, crazy were you guys time the, back then. Weren't you the company that like had the disclaimer and you were like chiding Disney for not owning your mistakes of the past and having like a disclaimer at the front that said like these are different time. They didn't know, or I mean, they didn't, or they didn't care. They're just what, as damaging then as they are now. What they should have done is they should have stole what they did from the golden DVD editions, which I own because I am a big Looney Tunes fan. And literally, yeah. they had Leonard Moulton and Whoopi Goldberg come out every time you were about to play one of the racist ones, and they're <laughs> like, "Hey, gang, Whoopi Goldberg and Leonard Moulton here, letting you know that this thing was made like back in the early forties, and boy." people were pretty racist back then so you know be prepared for it just you know letting you know right okay you cool you cool okay now we'll let you get on with it then that's right. what they should have done don't laugh at that um yeah that, that's what they should do just just a text box is all you need but uh they have turner classic movies on there which you could watch for free anywhere oh. um and uh and they have like a bunch of just like old ass movies that like no one would watch <laughs> It's just, it's just fat. And their, their children's section, like the kids section for like, uh, I'm going to throw on HBO max. Here you go. Kids go for it. Like we're no, we're a non Disney family. <laughs> um, it's like, it sucks. <laughs> like it's I like, bet. wow, that that's really weak. Um, but anyway, uh, but HBO max is in this situation where they're like, okay, well DC, that's the thing we have. Let's make those. So like you have a huge amount of DC shows. And of course, HBO max is becoming a big industry leader by saying, yo, 20, okay, so 2020 was was effed. Mm -hmm. 2021, we're admitting it's basically shot. We're putting everything we can into HBO Max. Our, our upcoming 2021 slate is all getting rolled in HBO Max. It'll come out in theaters too. But it's also going HBO Max. Which which seems wildly presumptuous even now. Patty Jenkins being like, oh, but you can see Wonder Woman in theaters and on HBO Max on the same day. But it's cheaper if you see it in the app, actually. But we really hope you risk your life and go see it in a the theater. I'm like, didn't, didn't Christopher Nolan just do this? And didn't people fucking rip him a new one over it for being so presumptuous? And everything that thinking people will risk their lives and their health and the health and lives of their family and their community to go see Tenet, which they didn't do. Right. Which I would never do. Now, it's funny because, like, if it was like a Tarantino movie, I wonder if it would have had more people go to it because, like, his stock hasn't, like, declined. 
that's that's the thing where it's like, come on, Joel, don't get off your high horse for a minute. If it was a certain movie, you know, you would probably risk it. And I'm like, that's true. But they did come out with the movie I'd risk it for. I'll be honest. There isn't a movie like they had Empire in the theater. I didn't go. They uh, they, they had Jurassic Park in the theater. I didn't go. The, I And those are old movies. Like there's nothing new that was going to come out that I was looking forward to. Ghostbusters is supposed to come out in July. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Uh, I, and, and I wasn't like stamping my feet and crossing my arms it was just just the nature of the beast those movies were made they will come out they have to make their money back there's no way i'm not going to not see it new mutants is out and everyone said that we were never going to see that i still haven't seen it because of all the negative like controversy you you didn't miss a goddamn thing but i hear i I, you know so i'm like whatever i mean eventually i'll catch it we almost watched it the other day and instead we watched three episodes of lovecraft county (laughs) Ah, uh, see, I keep meaning to start Lovecraft County. How's Lovecraft County, Sal? <laughs> or is it country? I don't know. But it's great. It's an excellent show. It's funny yeah, because, like, you think it's one thing, and then it's like, you think it's one thing from the advertising. Then you watch the first episode, and you're like, did you trick me? <laughs> and then it becomes that thing. And you're like, oh, okay. Like, it's, you know, not a little minor spoilers for Lovecraft. You, you know, it's like, you see this, and you're like, is this like a kind of like a, is this like a, is this like a, like a sci-fi Lovecraft era, mm. you know, like kind of show about like people and monsters and stuff. And then you watch uh, the, the first episode and you're like, is this, is this a show about how racist it was in the fifties? And, and the monsters are white people. Mm. And then like monsters show up. <laughs> and you're like, I, oh, okay. There's monsters too. I, like, I, I, can I, be I, both. Absolutely. I read a great quote about that show was from, you know, someone who writes for one of the more prolific African-American entertainment magazines. And they're like, man, you know, I'm so sick of black suffering in my entertainment. When can we get some black thriving in entertainment? Lovecraft County. What if spooky suffering? And they're like, hmm. Okay, go ahead with the spooky suffering. <laughs> all right, I'll watch that because it is and it's fun, and the the actors are the leads are all black and they're all excellent. Yeah, from what I hear. Uh, but yeah, um, anyway, so uh, we'll get into the superheroes now. Uh, but Psycho Red had a great point, which which segues perfectly into an article I have. Hey. Boy, Nolan, boy, is Nolan on a high horse? Yeah, he is. Uh, Nolan said, uh, and here's the thing: is that like <laughs> power structures, right? Like. Never underestimate greed versus mm-hmm. power. Mm-hmm. You know, like Nolan was a was a power mover for Warner Brothers, and he was able to dictate ridiculous standards and expectations. Yep. And he was able to make Dunkirk, and he's like, you know, I'm oh, sure. smoothing. Yeah, exactly. He's all in on these things, and they're like, okay, Mister Nolan, whatever you want to do. And then they spent like this insane amount of money to develop HBO Max, and they're like, okay, so we are so effed and we have spent so much money and literally like we can't sustain this level of spending. So we need to recoup some of that loss. Like unlike Netflix who can just spend until judgment day. Yeah. We need to recoup this loss. Like, like, like tomorrow. And so what they do, they, they dumped a bunch of movies on HBO max and they canceled a bunch of things and they made these decisions about the same day and date. Now that being mm-hmm. said, of course the movies that are coming out, for 2021 that are going to be released on HBO Max. Temporary, not going to be like on HBO Max forever for for posterity. Yeah, I, I, is- I, I think we buried the lead there. But for those who are unaware, uh, Warner Brothers basically announced that, hey, we're dumping our entire uh, 2021 movie slate on HBO Max. Not all at once. A lot of people no. wrongly thought that they were dumping it all at once, which, yes, <laughs> would be banana pants insane. But no. Yeah. And there's yeah, some big be a, movies in there. There'll be a hell of a week for HBO Max. <laughs> for real. Well, I guess I'm not getting off the couch. Sorry, everyone. No podcast, not anything. I got to watch Kong versus Godzilla and the new Dune and the new Suicide Squad. And the Mortal Kombat reboot. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a thing. And Space Jam 2. Oh, yeah. Uh, jammier than ever. Yeah. Except like then everyone would have spent the week watching it and then canceled their HBO Max immediately. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. So yeah, I mean, th- there's a reason Mandalorian and WandaVision are going to come out week to week and even the boys came out week to week let me tell you something by the way like i the only reason why binging is acceptable and why it's like the norm is because the netflix model spoke to it they're like we have the whole show these are old shows we're not making new shows Mm -hmm. and i i would say that the marvel shows suffered significantly from the netflix model because yeah you know they you'd you'd 
I remember I tried to like pace myself watching the shows I enjoyed, like Daredevil and Luke Cage, and like Same. everyone else was just like, "Well, have you seen the last episode, dude? It came out like twelve hours ago." Like, yeah, well, I powered through the first couple episodes, and I skipped a couple more, and then I just watched the th- the last three three episodes. I'm like, you've ruined it, and th- and then there's no hype and there's no discussion. Mandalorian, sure people can dig it for like a good month or hype two. and discussion. Yeah, every day, every week, they brought back the good part of Destination Television, actually, and that is like, yo, we all know the same things, and we're all on the same page for a week. Exactly. We can all speculate on these things and not have advanced knowledge. We can just be like, man, what's going to happen next? I don't know. I haven't watched it. It's a um, nice feeling. Also, too, yeah. an- another thing you know, to bring it back to the Marvel shows there, I think, too, that also affected the filming and the writing of being like, oh, well, people are going to binge watch this anyway, so let's make one very long movie then. Right. Right. And that that's 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 been the direction of media anyway. I mean, Breaking Bad is episodic, but it is like a self-contained story that is about yeah. this dude. Um, Nolan says there's such controversy around it because they didn't tell anyone. It's very, 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 very messy. A real bait and switch. It's sort of like not how you treat filmmakers and stars and people who, you know, these guys have given a lot for these projects. They deserved to be consulted and spoken to about what was going to happen to their work. Nolan get over yourself man yeah, for real this is also like you you gave a lot yeah and they gave you something too it was called a salary they paid you what you were owed is the thing now again i don't know what kind of contract he signed and we talked about this before we started i think a lot of reasons a lot of these creators are upset right now yes. about the move to digital is that they got a deal lined up is that i get so many ticket residuals in the first weekend that's the sweet plum that goes to me that's what i've argued for in my contract and if you're not selling tickets do you still get that money probably not yeah take a look at the most vocal people who are against these moves and it's folk who are used to or expecting to make a billion dollars within their sp- their movie's lifespan and have like opening weekends of the to the tune of like 60 to 80 to 100 million dollars. So like like Nolan and Patty Jenkins making Wonder Woman. Mm. Um, Margot Robbie's people were apparently quite upset too with plenty of good reason. I mean, she basically has, you know, situated herself like no no, I am the face of this brand whether you want it or not. I have tried very hard to do that. Uh even some of the smaller studios that are like co-financing and co-producing stuff like Dune and Godzilla versus Kong where they're like, "Um hello, this is our movie too kind of and we should have been asked about this." True. And it's like, mm. Then my attention turns towards the people who have been working tirelessly to get something they've been working their asses off for their entire mm-hmm. lives creatively out there. I'm not you know, sympathetic like, to artists and their plight. Look at look at uh, how it's never been a better time, right, to be a, a, a in TV creatively because oh, yeah. there's almost no chance of not getting greenlit. Because oh, really? there's some format you could make it for. Look at how uh, there's that awful show. Uh, it was like myths or something. It was Sam Raimi did one of them. It was about oh the, yeah uh, on, on Quibi. I'm talking specifically about yeah yeah um, yeah the, the man with the golden arm or whatever. Yeah, yeah exactly. But like these folks just wanted to get their shows made or yeah. their movies made, and if like Quibi is going to give them. 20 to 60 million dollars to make it I'll, why not you take the book you take the money you make the thing because you know there are there there are many stories of of movies tv shows or whatever that were made and never seen but like yeah the proportion of things that were put on a shelf forever and the things that eventually saw the light of day is very top heavy towards things everyone has eventually seen certainly and it's like Am I sympathetic to Patty Jenkins more specifically? Only marginally, because Patty Jenkins is a female movie director. She doesn't get a lot. Like, there aren't a lot of prominent female directors who make big budget action movies. And Patty Jenkins has also been screwed over a number of times. Absolutely. And this is a war journal. Yeah, and this was zone. Yeah, and, and this was supposed to be her big thing, too, where it's like, look, I'm finally free from the, you know, what is it, from the tentacles of Snyder and his vision, this finally gets to be mine. Yep. 
made my way with my aesthetic and my everything. And this was going to be the big movie of summer. And this was going to be a huge thing. It was going to put the DC universe back on track. And yep. I got to do that. That would be my feather in my cap. Right. Sorry, you, de- you don't get to. No. And the movie is going to come out on HBO Max the same day as it comes out in theaters where no one should be. Yes. Listen, that sucks. That's a raw deal. That's a raw deal. And everyone experiences it and everyone has experienced it all year. Mm -hmm. So, and some folk experiencing it harder than others. You know, some folk can't afford food and some people lost loved ones and you won't make a lot of money this quarter. So like less sympathetic for you, but I do appreciate your strife. Yes. You know, like I get it. And that sucks. The other thing that we had to ask, the other question we had was, because like we said, Nolan and Jenkins definitely got some back end deal because they wouldn't be the only ones complaining out loud about it if they weren't if expecting they to make some some initial gross. I, my, I guess my question is like, what can they expect from this digital deal, right? Because the idea is they're... Th- they're not that contract does not probably apply to HBO max. And it's certainly not proportionate to HBO max's earnings. No, definitely not. I mean, how they're not even doing the Disney thing of like, Oh, well you got to get the app and then you got to pay $30 on top of it. If you want to yeah. watch Mulan. Right. At least then they could be like, okay, I made my however much percent from the gross, except it would be like drastically lower based on the numbers from Mulan, which of course are secret, like everything which that's going to be an interesting thing and a potential all digital future. And again, we talked about this before we started too. going all digital means movie studios never have to tell you how much their movie made or lost anymore. The numbers will be completely internal now and forever, which on one hand, it's like, Oh cool. Movies can now succeed and fail on their own artistic merits. And people can't use box office to bludgeon people over the head with, but also as you (laughs) said so eloquently, yeah, but that also means things are just going to fucking start disappearing when they don't ma- meet the quota. Exactly. Their quotas will be <laughs> internal. They'll be secret. They're keep, they, they'll be secret across media. You know, like, it won't even just be that, like, this is the new standard and we all keep our secrets. No, it's like Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus, like, di- they all have their own secret private numbers and they'll all have their own different secret ability to track success and measure yeah. that and and determine what deserves success and what doesn't and it's like that that sucks like in a world where there's more transparency than ever the uh, the norm being less transparency in something as problematic as spending millions upon millions tens hundreds of millions of dollars in one go yeah. is a problem it, you know it, i don't want to start talking about like how how it could normalize and facilitate money laundering and you know <laughs> other like <laughs> another graft within the hollywood i'm sure they've got that covered but uh but it's just i don't like lack of transparency particularly when it's something that has been the norm now the question is whether like box like you said box office has been used to measure success or or failure mm. I like the idea of that being kind of removed. Yeah. Like that's kind of a benefit. That's a, that's a positive. Um, but I wonder if it's the only positive. Um, yeah. Rescue 910 says, uh, I feel like we're circling back to around cable for $60. You'll be able to get Disney plus Netflix and HBO max from a giant middleman. Yes. Yeah. That sucks. Yes, we have absolutely gone back in time 100%. And hey, uh, now we're getting to the point, too, where there's jacking up prices. Like last time when I signed into Netflix, I got the message like, hey, we're increasing your thing two bucks. You probably won't care because you just like let this auto do the thing anyway. But you also Uh probably have like Amazon and Disney Plus going, too. So, you know, if you got to move your finances around, you should probably do that. Yeah, two bucks. It's incremental. And I appreciate the heads up anyway. Like that's that's cool. Uh, Swordfish ninety seven help us out. Uh, you know, thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. Um, Cam says, "Truth be told, these businesses are too large and too slow to do anything effectively in a timely manner." Yeah. Normally that's true, but in this particular case, I got to tell you, like the decision to to go twenty twenty one full movie slate onto HBO, like that was that was neck snappingly fast. In Pretty snap decision. Yeah. Yeah. 
Luke Verillo seems reasonable for Warner Brothers to release their movies on streaming in 2021. These movies can be released later in 2022 for matinee prices or cheap to get butts back mm -hmm. in seats. I hope Disney Plus takes notes for Black Widow. Black Widow is the exception. We've talked about this. We maybe talked about this on the show that never existed. I think we might have. Where I think because we are like on the heels of a vaccine, like God willing, uh, that, well, the 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 young lady, the the the, 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 the ninety years young lady in uh, U the UK receiving her first vaccine, um, is an indication that we're going to be seeing that rolled out fairly quickly over the next like three four months. But even then, it'll be going to first responders and frontline workers and everything before it ever gets to YouTubers. <laughs> well, yes, but but I'm expecting that like by June, everyone will have access to it. Mm, that's the hope. That's a hope, and it's 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 based on nothing. So please don't set your watch to my my theories. But let's say it is done. Let's say that like the the vaccines are 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 readily available to all Americans in by 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 May thirty first. Mm. I guess it would behoove Disney to release Black Widow around June second. Hey, everyone, you miss movie theaters. Hey, everyone, you miss not getting to see an Avengers movie this year. Well, guess what? We got an Avengers movie right here and waiting for you. Isn't that nice? Maybe you should go see it a couple times, actually, to really pump some money back into the economy and everything. And hey, this movie that maybe we weren't too sure about to begin with now is actually situated to kick a lot of ass and be a big thing for theaters reopening. And again, and too, they got their digital show. So they're like, we got fucking WandaVision. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Disney doesn't need Marvel. Disney doesn't need to like change their 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 whole programming to get people to be aware of their brand at yeah. this point. Also, hey, um, you know, that thing that Patty Jenkins is upset about, like where it's like first female director could be making a billion dollars. Wonder Woman, blah, blah, blah. Well, Disney and I'm not. A war. I'm not applauding Disney. I'm not like jacking Disney Disney off. I'm, I'm just basically saying like this is not a bad advantage to take in their perspective where they're like we wait until like because we have WandaVision. We could we could probably if we needed to in the next four months get Hawkeye slash Falcon Winter Soldier off the ground. Like we got all these things like in the hopper ready to go, or at least so close to the hopper, you know, if, if things get better, say like March, boom, yeah. new show. Um, I, I think the problem with Falcon Winter Soldier is that they were filming it all world. over the world, which became really difficult where WandaVision, okay, clearly this is filmed on yeah. sound stages <laughs> and green screens and everything else, which is kind of the point of the show. Cause it's all like weird and mind bendy. And, you know, we don't have to leave the States to film it legitimately they could just rest on wandavision to get them to the summer season and then release the biggest move the biggest movie of the last two years which was a movie that probably wasn't going to make a billion dollars it's black widow it was a it shouldn't have cost too much it did but it shouldn't have and female director yeah kate shortland be like hey i'm the first female director to make a billion dollars <laughs> remember me everybody Pat like, Jenkins just eats her hat like, like the real natasha romanoff no i will lie and wait in the shadows until the time is right and then i will strike with a venom blast <laughs> exactly radical radish is gonna uh take a few friends and rent out the theater to see wonder woman on christmas but that's oh. as far as i'm willing to go i thought about doing that with the team because like AMC is doing that here in the States where it's like you, they have a set number of movies that are available. You could spend $99 or something like that to like watch this movie with a cup with your pod, essentially. Um, they weren't showing anything worth a damn. Mm. So I didn't do it. <laughs> like I'm, I'm good. Makes sense. Uh, also when Wonder Woman comes out, me and my wife and maybe like Ben will hang out and watch it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's what's is, is it coming out Christmas Day or is it coming out the 16th? OK, yeah. yeah, which a lot of companies are dropping big movies on Christmas Day. We got Soul uh, from oh, Disney yeah. dropping on that day, which is getting amazing reviews, by the way. I'm very mm. excited for that. I think The Croods is dropping on that. Oh, day. I know. Right. Hey, it's, hey uh, us too. We have an animal movie, too. Look at us Good for you, Croods. I don't care. Apparently that movie made a shocking amount of money actually over the Thanksgiving season when they actually did release to select the years. It made like $14 million, mm -hmm. which 
considering the times is pretty impressive. Pretty good. <laughs> better than Tenet. Yeah, better than Tenet, <laughs> which I'm sure Nolan loves that, knowing that people loved the Croods too more than Tenet. <laughs> Uh, concept court 10 bucks for mentioning lovecraft lovecraft country such an awesome show thank you very much check it out yeah you gotta you gotta see it i I was doing a list uh for another show where it's like what were my favorite things of the year and i did a whole thing on television and god damn it was long i'm like fuck me i watched a lot of really good tv this year yeah yeah that's the thing is that like tv has become the movie industry it switched to being like ever since tv got good you know like ever since like amc up their game like Mm -hmm movie star of course because movie stars were making less money for movies and stuff like that so it's like tv had to get better and it did and and, and now it's like that's the standard streaming is like oh i can make a move like american whatever the hell uh thinking about uh that show that tiffin and i watched um i don't remember what it was called doesn't matter uh it was one of those you know ghosts and stuff shows but it's like eight episodes it's basically an hour eight hour movie Oh, Truth Seekers? Nah, no. Truth Seekers? Is that the one with Nick Frost? Yeah, the Amazon one. No, that's a joke. That's a comedy show about ghosts. I'm talking about the the, the high drama about ghosts. Oh, okay. An actual real ghost show. (laughs) Uh, Concept Court says, 10 bucks more for being yourselves. Thank you very much, Concept Court. You're very kind. We really appreciate it, man. Um, What was it? Uh, Psycho Red? They deserved an email two days before. That's it. Mm. Yeah, right? Like, hey, heads up. We're we're we're, we're dumping your movie on streaming. It's it's a cold fucking business, this Hollywood business, man. Well, they know that. It's not like they're like, they're not really hurt. They're just feigning offense to get your favor. And to hopefully to to look stronger on their next negotiation, which I'm sure is another big reason why Nolan is acting so salty now, because he he, he was so invincible for so long and Tennant showed that he was human and gave him a big old black eye. <laughs> that the next time he wants something from the studio, they're like, well, but Tennant, though. Yeah, but you can't judge Tennant because of the, the pandemic. Ah, we only look at the numbers. Yeah, you're only as good as your last hit, kid. That's right. Uh, Mr. Freeze 998 uh, joined late starting from the beginning. Curious to see when this shows up in the stream. Here it is, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, crap. There's more. Um, Raphael Rafal Wikilinski says greetings from Poland. Long time. First time tipper. Uh, sorry for my broken English. I learned reading comics. Good for you. Oh, wow. Congratulations. That's a good good for you. It's a good strong uh, reading method. Uh, also, is Joel foreshadowing his heel turn by wearing <laughs> wrestling merch on the camera? <laughs> yes, I'm going to hit Sal with a chair when this is all over <laughs> and then run off to another promotion with his microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling you out. Yes, for real. Uh, thank you very much. And that was the, your broken English was just fine. There was nothing yeah. broken about it. It was uh, perfectly intact. For real. Um, Scarlet Hottie theaters were the first place I went when I was bored. I'm excited. Warner brothers is confident enough to push the medium forward like this, but there's something so human about going to the theater to view the art. It's a nice experience. Yeah. I, uh, if I was in high school, I would be like really heartbroken. I was very much a film buff. I loved the theater Mm. experience, but uh, there was a penny arcade that came out like a week ago or yeah, maybe a week ago that really summed it up for me because like, if you're like a if you're if you're like a gamer or if you're like a if you're like a home theater person, mm-hmm. you definitely feel this way. Where it's just like I cannot wait to see movies, new movies in my house, because the theater going experience sucks. It's and it's only getting worse. And they try and improve it in the other direction. Where it's like okay, now it's a restaurant, the mm-hmm. movie theater, and now you can have booze. I'm like, well, now I feel you're actually distracting from the movie now in a weird <laughs> way. I mean, yeah. yes, it's more comfortable, but sometimes the chair is too comfortable, and I end up falling asleep in the movie I paid money to see. Exactly. Yeah, you know, this is this is the quote from Gabe. He says, "It's terrible, and I won't miss it." Peeling your shoes off the floor with each step, judgment from the snack counter, a small popcorn for ten thousand dollars, the stranger next to me watching hardcore pornography on their phone, <laughs> just so I can watch a movie through someone's hair. And uh, Tycho says, "But what about the good things?" And he says, "You're right. Sometimes you miss important parts of the movie because you have to pee." Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I will never forget when we were all together in Seattle and we saw Logan, Logan after a full day of con and we were all tired and they kept plying us with drinks and everything. So yeah. like one by one, all of us had to get up and go to the bathroom. And for some reason, this movie theater, you had to go up two flights of stairs and over to go to the bathroom. So we'd all be gone for like 15 minutes and come back. Like, hey, this is, what, 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 what happened? What I miss? Yeah. Yeah. We all stayed. We, we staggered our bathroom break so that we could all fill each other in on what, uh, what was happening with logan in the 15 minutes we were gone although that theater was interesting because they still piped in the sound so i'm like oh man sounds like logan's killing lots of people <laughs> while i sit here that's right <laughs> that's really weird um just another monster so sal i will pay you to rent a theater just for wonder woman <laughs> well now you have to <laughs> i'm not gonna do that why would i go to the theater I, it's gonna be in my house i'm gonna watch it there on christmas yeah we can have a wonderful day we can make a nice brunch and watch wonder woman <laughs> well when i was growing up like I was not like I, I missed the memo about it being like an experience to take your family on Christmas morning and go to the movie. Yeah, I never got that. E that sounds like an invention for people who hate their family and don't <laughs> want to talk to them is what that's always felt like to me. Yeah. Like I could barely go visit friends on Christmas day. Like, you know, I, I had to be back in time for dinner, yeah. which was at two 30. <laughs> yeah, like, isn't it always, it just seems like a lot, but uh, yeah, man. Um, so superhero movies going streaming. I think that the fact that the two leading studios with the two biggest comic book movie properties mm -hmm. are making competing streaming services and as such are taking some of their biggest properties, those being the superhero movie franchises, mm -hmm. and going and, and, and manipulating them to become like the flagship for their streaming services, right? Yes. That's because that, that seems really like the way to go. And everybody's doing it. Amazon's like, yo, we got the boys. We got Invincible coming. We have our own superhero spearhead I'm right. on, on our app that we are going to try and use to stab the culture, I guess. I don't know. This is breaking down. It, it is, but uh, I'll, I'll allow it. But the, the other thing is like, yeah, no, it's true. Amazon's making their own kind of superhero flagship thing. That's funny. Yeah. And they're successful too. Like, there's no doubt in my mind Invincible will win a whole bunch of awards or at the very oh, least get a lot oh, of looks great. acclaim. Um, they, Cause they know, cause they know like that's the one, that's one of the good benefits of this whole thing is them going like, well, since we're not on a, we're not like back then when they were developing these things, like we're not in a rush and we have like a crazy budget mm -hmm. instead of just making it based on the whims of some like illiterate movie producer, <laughs> we can just like, ask people you know like hey we're making we're thinking about doing invincible you know obviously they'd be like okay we're gonna hire like ezra miller to play invincible and it'll be a live action movie it'll summarize the first six volumes of the trade into a 90 minute franchise you know like it would have been garbage oh, but instead course. they're like okay well first of all it's got to be animated oh okay uh well people like animation so we can do that secondly you have to pick great voice actors and boy did they so they did and it's like oh Three, the animation has to look like the comic book, which it does. And oh my god, I am I, I forgot what really great superhero animation looked like. I used to go to Young Justice for that, then they clearly cut their budget for that. It's like, <laughs> oh, look, this one is moving and they're doing cool actions and everything. Holy shit. And even yeah. something like Harley Quinn, it's like, well, that's a comedy and it's pared down, but they spend their money in the right place. Yeah, no, Harley Quinn, you could see the seams on the on the animation for that show where you're like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but they tried and it's a comedy, so it doesn't always have to look perfect. As I, South Park has shown us. It wasn't about that. Like, it wasn't about the, the you know, when they would like make a high, an action sequence on the Harley Quinn show and it looked like crap. I, I remember just thinking like, why did you bother? <laughs> like, who's here for that? Like who's here for a disappointing action sequence when they could just be funny or literally like the Harley Quinn show was the kind of show where characters could have just Kevin Smithed it and just looked at the action that wasn't <laughs> being shown on screen and been like, Whoa, can you believe that? Um, Radical Radish says, uh, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to love the fact that I don't have to pay twice to see a scene from movies. I dig. Yeah. Yeah, well, I have news for you, man. There's a thing called YouTube, and uh, every scene you like from every movie is just a clip you could watch. <laughs> uh, Will Randolph the Fifth says, "Super chat for Joel for hey. reference AEW slash Impact." Yes, 
Yes, there's a big wrestling crossover happening right now that everyone is very excited about because that doesn't happen very often, if at all. Mm. So everyone's like really stoked to watch tonight to see what that means. Yeah. Uh, Luke Verrillo, what movies yet to film? What about movies yet to film? Are, are budgets going to be slashed with unpredictable theater going audiences? What does this mean for Guardians of the Galaxy 2, uh, Captain Marvel 2, Black Panther 2, etc.? Um, that's a great question because... I think that when it comes to like things like guardians and black Panther and captain Marvel, like these are movies that are definitely going to be made for the theater. These are not movies. They're tent poles. Yeah. These are movies that also weren't meant for 2021. You know, they're being made in 2021 and their budgets were probably set a long time ago. Exactly. Uh, The real question will be whether this has killed theaters. Yeah, that's the big thing. And I'm glad it took us this long to actually get to it. Uh, Do we think this will be the death nail of theaters when one of the biggest companies with the biggest IP war chest or one of the biggest IP war chest says, you know, we we don't really care about theaters for 2021 (laughs) because it's more important that we make our money. And yes, the optics on that look bad because it's us basically saying that we care more about our own profits and our own bottom, bottom lines and helping prop up a whole industry. But with streaming and home theaters, we don't need to prop up a whole industry anymore. And the theater industry was already in trouble and was probably going to die in our lifetime anyway. We're merely accelerating the process. They could have, you know, eked out a couple, you know, death groans, or we could just put the pillow over their face. Like, you're free now, theaters. You're well, free now. I can imagine that, that studios are just like Warner Brothers is going like, they're still coming out. Yeah. We could have not. Yeah, exactly. Because, because theaters take 50% of the box office take, by the way. Like, theaters take a big chunk of the movie um, and make all their money from the friggin', what's it called? From the from the concession. Yeah. Uh, I can see a, a studio just being like, yeah, no, we've, d- we've abandoned the movie uh, theater, and uh, we're just going to go with this way. I mean, like, how we have many... the deal, pray we alter it no further. <laughs> how, how many mid-budget, low-budget movies have you seen in a theater in the last 10 years? Right, like not many at all. It's got to be a big blockbuster to get me at, or it's got to be like one of those surprise things, like hey, so it's doing really goddamn good and getting really good reviews and everything. And it's like, oh, I'd like to go and support that, or like, oh, here's a director I want to support because I want his next big thing to be something. But even it is a franchise picture, you know, true enough. It's it was they definitely thought of it that way in in any case. Um, But yeah, I, I think that like what instead you'll see is that like independent movies will come out on streaming services because streaming services are not going anywhere. And for some reason, I mean, if, if Netflix is any indication, like you can be in the red for almost a decade and still be a company, which is shocking. And yeah. And sometimes you'll just cancel shows uh, that people were enjoying with seemingly no rhyme or reason. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's coming from the place of like, of, of, of um, exclusivity, uh, proprietary and like lack of transparency, right? Where it's like, um, we're going to cancel things because of any reason, whether it doesn't make us a lot of money, whether it didn't get us more subscribers this se- this quarter, <laughs> whether uh, the people involved tried to unionize to and Birdie Bojack Horseman. <laughs> and that's the thing is that like they could use the the model and the format to obfuscate really shady practices, and there's no way. They will not do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you give them an inch, they'll demand a mile. <laughs> like every Because companies are amoral institutions that exist yeah. solely to make profit. And I don't mean like AT&T hates you. It's more like AT&T slash every company, every company. It, the company, not the people who make the company alive, not the company, not the people who work for your company. The company is exists to make profit that's mm. what it does that is neither moral nor that is not neither good nor evil it's just what they do so they will but they will do anything to get those profits because that's what it does right it's like a tiger that's like i eat i hunt you can't be offended by my hunting mm. right like even if your uncle was eaten by a tiger <laughs> um but like and you can be mad, you can be upset, and like it, it's it, not good. That's yeah, sure. and we can all admit that that was a shame, but like you can't really blame the tiger. You can blame the comp, but like that's why we build fences and we have like <laughs> masks on the back of our heads. Like it's it, that metaphor breaks down too, but like it's why regulation's important. Yes, you know because 
because companies will do whatever they want with impunity as long as you let them. So if you give them an opportunity like streaming to hide shit, they will. They sure will. will. And, and, and don't assume the best. Assume the worst and be surprised by the best. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't the worst thing ever. Oh. Yeah. Well, they weren't monsters. Why? Why weren't you monsters? Are you hiding something? Yeah, really. What is what is the dark side of this altruism you're showing? Exactly. Uh, Rusky says uh, Marvel probably has a nice rainy day fund to avoid streaming movies day one since they made over seven billion dollars in two years in their movies. True enough. Yeah. Um, it's funny because like they mentioned that they were like they were doing badly because they were losing money on the parks too. like the parks, the movies, the, their their all of their divisions were hurt. They're by all the part pandemic. of the same machine. Yeah. So d trust me, if you if you think that Disney is resting on their laurels or not actively pursuing ways to squeeze, they are. Um, Lucha Dandy, I need more wrestling moves in my superhero. <laughs> Can you imagine the hype of Captain America doing a snap suplex? Oh. Wonder Woman doing a shining wizard? Oh, hell yeah. That's that's kind of like a runny knee strike, but it's like fancier than that. And it's called a shining wizard, which I love so much. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, KB, this won't kill theaters. The good ones will adapt. What That's, good ones are those exactly? Like again, all the all the mom and pop shops are basically having to close. They're getting muscle out. The big corporate ones are closing too, and it's not like the fucking airlines or anything where they're going to get a governmental bailout. No, it's the arts. They're not getting a bailout. Uh, but yeah, no man. Um, this this is this is definitely killing theaters. But it's not the streaming that's killing the theaters. I think it's it's the pandemic. It's people not being able to go to theaters. Just and like you know, the pandemic is killing that restaurants. Much. Exactly, and the fact that theaters weren't making that much beforehand anyway, because it was always an industry that was injured and sickly to begin with, and no one quite figured out how to fix that. They couldn't handle all this time off, or they couldn't open their doors. Exactly, the good ones will adapt. That's such a loaded thing to say. Like the good ones will ad how it, it it implies that you know this is a meritocracy and people succeed succeed and fail via merit when we know that there are several other factors out there that keep that from happening. Well, and like, what are they going to do? Are, are they going to create pods for people for the next four months that they, they where they sit in a chair and they'll be contained and. Like no, they, they they can't adapt. They can't make people have movies people want to see. You know they they don't make movies themselves. Uh, they they can't guarantee people's safety and health in their theaters. They can't lower their prices. You know the only thing that's going to happen is that like because franchise pictures are a billion dollar industry, and let's hope that them losing billions of dollars will teach them to behave more conservatively. Mm -hmm. Ha ha ha. There's no way that's going to happen, but like, let's say it did, then maybe they wouldn't need to make a billion dollars every goddamn quarter. But let's say they don't learn their lesson. Franchise pictures, are the only ones that are going to be the only reason to have a theater in the first place. And so, you know, since AMC or Cinemark or whatever the hell, yeah, yeah. You know, since they don't make content and they're entirely dependent on other content producers to give them their stuff and all the content producers are making direct competitors for theaters, what's probably more likely that's going to happen is AT&T and Disney will buy the competing theater chain. all the fledgling theaters and then hey guess what we got the return of the studio system everybody now they make the movies own the theaters and the concession and everything else which means they can also do whatever the hell they want you want to see the new avengers you can only see it at select theaters and only at these times you can see it at disney theaters and you can see it in this big big expensive disney store and it'll be like going to the park only it'll okay. be at the theater. so that's that's the future that, that's what they'll do uh straight out of midgard go ahead I was gonna say, didn't they try and do that actually at one point? Didn't Disney like create like a bunch of like mall store? Yeah, the Disney store. Oh, the Warner Brothers store existed too. Both of them did it already. That's the thing is that they both have templates for having like a lobby. Essentially, the Disney store and the Warner Brothers store, RIP. I wish I'd taken more advantage of the Warner Brothers store in my mall. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, that's what the lobby of those theaters will look like. 
as dark and dystopian as that is, just be sure to put a spinner rack in there with the actual comics that the Come movies on. are based on, please. Yeah, two years from now we'll be going to be complaining about how they don't put comic books in their in their in their uh, Disney and Warner Brothers run theaters. Let's let us mark this day in time. It's the sixth of December, twenty twenty. We're the saying this. Oh Jesus! Oh shit! Time, fucking what is time anymore? <laughs> Catch up, man. I, I don't fucking even know anymore. Okay, at at, at almost two o'clock, let's put that down there we're going to complain that they're not putting comics in their theater studio run store yeah, in their studio run theater experience like shop oh. it'll look like a, it'll look like the gift shop in any park yeah you know like when you get off the batman ride there's the batman uh gift shop when you get off the uh, when you get in the star wars land there's the star wars gift shop trust me you'll see a disney store and a world brothers store in those theaters when they do that I think this is another thing, the, the Elseworld prediction <laughs> that we can put money on this one, that this ends up being a thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, straight out of Midgard says theaters will probably fully automate to cut costs. Ticket and popcorn machine yeah. two employees working the entire companies. They're already doing they were already doing that when I saw a movie the last time, like pretty much everything was automated. At the very least, it wasn't like it, automation is the future. It's definitely going to happen. But here's the other thing that they could do that is circumventing that or delaying it a little more uh i'm i order my food or my, and my concessions on my way to the theater mm. on my phone or i do it in the theater and they deliver it to my damn seat that'd be nice so you don't fully cut out people those, no those, those exist today i can do that right now oh really yeah no they i've done that <laughs> See, we're now like, I'm reminded that I live in a shitty small town where technology right. has not caught up to anything yet. You know, we have a huge ass AMC at the Rockaway Town Square Mall. So hey. like we uh that's that's where I but yeah, you could I don't know if I've had it delivered. I think we definitely ordered for the row, and then one of us went down and there's like a there's like an area, like pre-ordered stuff, and you just pick it all up and take it away. That level of automation always kind of depresses me, though, because I hate cutting out the human element on that. Where it's like, no, this should be a job for a teenager or like yeah. an elderly person or something. It feels weird that these jobs are going like at my local supermarket. They have one automated checkout thing now. And shockingly for my small town, a lot of people don't want to use the automated checkout <laughs> because, again, they're in their old timey small town ways. And even in my way, too, I'm kind of like, yeah, no. Nah. Well, maybe if I'm in a hurry, though. But yeah, like, <laughs> I love the self checkout. I exclusively use it. It is bliss <laughs> because I've I could count on one hand the amount of good interactions I've had checking out anything at any store with a person uh i would much rather just get it done and leave it's just like pumping my own gas in new jersey right. we can't i'd much rather do it because jackass shoves it in my tank walks away and serves it <laughs> with other cars i'll do it thank you uh but yeah no it's, it's way better there's a guy at the local grocery store which i don't shop at anymore they when it was an A&P, Atlantic and Pacific, for those of you who are hey. old, uh, who had six self-checkout registers. When the Acme bought it, when A&P when A went out of business, they wanted to return the human element and mm. they removed all six self-checkouts and destroyed them. <laughs> I'm like, and I, I remember going there, seeing them missing, and then going to the manager and being like, did you replace them with six full-time register people? Mm. Because that's exactly what you just removed. And sure enough, lines went through the building. Amazing. It was just horror. And then they, they, and they had to rebuild them and reinstall new ones. And then this, this horrible checkout clerk is now in charge. He's he's been horrible for a decade. <laughs> he's still there. Now he's in charge of the machines. And what he'll do is if you have if you, if you are working at your machine, he'll walk over to you and show you how the machine works. Ah uh, yeah, they do that here too. I'm like fuck off. Uh Scarlet Hottie says we may never hear Snoochy Boochies blasted through a million dollar Dolby speaker ever again. <laughs> oh no. I weep for the future generation. Take, take it from someone who did recently. That's okay. <laughs> I saw that sequel. 
Snorlax Snorlax says, "What's your guy's best worst purchase in mm. code?" I got a shake maker. Is that That's best perfect. or worst? As I mean, well, it's a little bit of both, actually. I was really good at it first when I was making like milkshakes and fruit smoothies and everything. And then this week, I'm like, okay, so I got to get back on keto because uh, what is I'm actually doing a thing on my own channel with a keto company, and I got to make it look like I'm protecting their investment by actually trying to lose some weight totally. in December, which is the worst fucking time to do it. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna switch to coconut milk for this shake, which I've never really done before. So like, I put too much coconut milk in, so it was 90% coconut milk, and I got really sick for the night from drinking too much <laughs> coconut milk so best and worst purchase by far that shake maker i got nice um i don't i don't know i didn't really buy a lot of stuff uh i bought a shelf from ikea to maximize storage in my hall closet and it didn't fit oh but it also but then i brought it to my studio and it is a terrific way to break up a room so best and worst was the same thing wicked Patrick Lawson just got here, so I'm going to go back to the start. All right, see you later, Patrick. Thank you. See you in the future. <laughs> you caught up with us. Uh, Kevin Myers, maybe this leads to more animated hero properties. Let's hope, hope so. so, right? Because like, as much as Doom Patrol is a celebrated, award-winning property, yeah. as much as like people like uh, want, people will enjoy probably WandaVision and stuff, like you could probably save a boatload of cash and still have the exact same amount of people watching your shit if you really like go full in on animation and just so just so happens that you know disney has some kind of history with animation for some reason they've been shitting the bed for the last five to ten years on it but what uh, missed opportunity there you 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 work for an animation house and like the, only now are we getting like those marvel what ifs yeah and when are we gonna get those again they were announced those like two ten like however many years ago it was forever ago for now I mean, animation is time consuming is the yeah. thing. But yeah, you think they'd be further along. Uh, interesting, too, to bring it back to Netflix. Netflix doesn't have their Marvel stuff anymore. So it seems like they're buying up and experimenting now with whatever they can. Uh, yes. Give give Mark Millar a bunch of money. We'll do a Millerverse. Uh, Umbrella Academy. People like that. Let's do some more seasons of that. Yep. Yep. There's a Jurassic Park, Park cartoon show for kids. It's like, okay. It's okay. Oh, yeah, I think I passed that once or twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I hope so. I, I'd like to see that. Um, but yeah, I think this is the future, man. I think that uh, I think that superheroes... I, I think superheroes are not necessarily going to go full streaming. It's more like... It's more like how it is where in comics where, like, the big guys, mm. the big guns, will get features right. in theaters. And the risk years the guardians of the galaxies because i don't think we would have gotten a guardians movie in this kind of climate no probably uh, not if they had decided to experiment now like eternals is going to be the last huh marvel property you see in a theater uh whereas they're just going to go oh well if there's a neat idea we'll stick it over there we'll put it in the streaming like we'll make a streaming show out of it or we'll experiment with it we'll do like a you know, like a four episode special or something. So to try and hedge their bets, theaters will only be places for things that we know or feel pretty confident will make a billion dollars. That's right. Yes. That theaters will basically be billion dollar exhibitions. Mm. And that's it. Heck um, of a future. <laughs> yeah. I hope not, but we'll see. Uh, it's, it's very interesting just uh, for the, for the fun of it. Let's wrap up by showing off what is coming from Warner Brothers on HBO Max in 2021. I like it. G really? January 15th is Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Da, 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 da. Have we even seen a trailer for that yet? No. That's crazy. No. Does uh, that mean Tom it's bad? Because they haven't shown a trailer yet. I'm only mentioning, by the way, movies that I like recognize or that you might care about. Like yeah. Tom and Jerry, March 5th. Oh, yeah. They showed the trailer for that. Uh, what yeah, is that it? looks like hot hot shit in a warm pool chloe grace moretz i thought you were better at picking movies than this unless you did it a long time ago and they shelved it and it's only coming out now oh uh, that's what it looks like didn't she say that she was like not gonna make movies for a long time yes because she wanted to like go back to having a normal life to where it's like yeah if i can get on to you yeah don't make tom and jerry <laughs> um, the prequel to sopranos the many saints of newark march 12th that was a real thing. I thought that was like an April Fool's joke. That's actually a thing. Yeah. Starring James Gandolfini's son. Yeah. 
Really? Yep. Huh. May twenty first, Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah. I didn't even see a thing. Like I, I remember them talking about making it, but I remember them actually making it. I saw nothing about it. They have been super weird and coy with this, where it's like, hey, here's that Kong of Skull Island movie, which a lot of people enjoyed, and here's that Godzilla movie that didn't do great at the box office, but they weren't punishing it because they were already kind of working up to this anyway, because yep. they were hoping that it would make more than the two together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Conjuring, June 4th. Uh, I have no connection to any of them. No, nope, I mentioned only because they're very popular. J they Space are. Jam 2, July yeah. 16th. <laughs> It's a red Now, here's the thing. Did they get the Quad City DJs back to do an updated version of the Space Jam? Because if they didn't, you're leaving money on the goddamn table. I, I, I can pretty much almost guarantee that that is absolutely true, that they definitely screwed that up. Now, now um, look, Quad City DJs is good, but we can all agree the Monstar Anthem is where it's actually at. You know, going yes. straight to the whole unstoppable, we run the court. <laughs> they didn't have to go that hard, but they went that hard. Yeah. Um, God, uh, the Suicide Squad, August sixth, the one I'm the most interested in because it looks sure. genuinely dope. Dune is October first. Oh yeah, I've never seen the original Dune because I know there's cuts that are like six days long. Yeah, it's it, it's something. Uh, Matrix Four, December twenty second. So a year from now, we'll see Matrix Four on HBO Max. Of course, the joke here is. The only ones that matter are the ones up till about June. So <laughs> Godzilla versus Kong will be affected significantly by this, right? But <clears throat> in a post-vaccine world, in a post-billion dollar Black Widow movie world, <laughs> I'm feeling like Space Jam, Suicide Squad, Dune, Matrix 4, and Elvis are all going to come out not on HBO Max. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing. They always, like, they can change their mind. <laughs> There's nothing in any of this writing that says they won't just change. Do we say that was coming out just streaming? We meant see it in the theater. Right. There's no way that they won't do that because they absolutely can and will. Um, this, the other thing about this, because it's like on paper, this sounds like bold and unbelievable. And it's like, whoa, look at this. They're making waves. They're doing there is virtual there's no no contracts have been written nothing has been signed it's just like we're a, we're a media company i own these movies i say where they go they can yeah. go to the th and they're still going to the theater we didn't we didn't violate the contract we just put it out here and there's no there's no um competition co clause i'm sure because it's like it, you know it, no one thought to put it in yet right like we probably have a, a standing contract with our distribution houses that doesn't include streaming because mm. we didn't have a streaming service last year. True. And the only thing that might stop them is, is that if, you know, some of these other celebrities and management companies that are getting all upset now, if they manage to actually complain enough where it's like, well, Mrs. Robbie will just go elsewhere now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but there's nothing on this that is a legally binding contract. No. So it's like, this could actually be a bargaining chip to put theaters further over a barrel. Like, Oh hey, man. Uh, so we're doing the same day and date release for Godzilla versus Kong May 21st, or we drop that from the list and you have to, and, and we don't give you 50 percent. we give you more like 25 well what did we say about graft in the future <laughs> yeah this could easily just be a an excuse for studios to take control of the like to take more control from the theaters and to recoup losses because of stuff like tenant and everything else. Yeah. Since I've put it out before, like HBO max is a pretty shitty, like children's section, Tom and Jerry, March 5th. I bet a bunch of parents can be like, finally watch this yeah, really. fucking thing. Well, I go do laundry. Can't wait for the fun. droopy movie. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> oh, I'm depressed. <laughs> Lucky us. Um, Rusky says, uh, I think there's a difference between theaters closing and the theater industry shutting down. If the demand returns business, people might open new ones. True enough. Yeah, 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 that's true. Um, but why would they risk a dead industry? I mean, unless it becomes like freaking barcades or something and we completely <laughs> reimagine what going to the movies even means now. Like, oh, and in the far flung future, you know, freaking plug the movie directly into your uplink chip, everybody, and watch it via VR or some shit. I don't yeah, know. I, I, uh, I could see 
it's too much of a change. Like malls still exist. We're ta- we talked about how like what if malls were like old age homes or what, yeah. what if malls were like low income housing or communities. We're not anywhere close to that. We're not going to be closer to that by like ten years or more. Um, you know, despite the fact that like a, there's a lot of dead malls out there that are just like falling apart across yeah. the American landscape. Theaters, like you know, I, there are a couple of closed theaters in my general vicinity, and they're just big empty husks that like are home for raccoons. <laughs> like th- they're not going to turn them into like fun plexes that also show movies yet. Like you know, when you talk about intrepid business owners, like none of them are going to spend right now anyway because they you know unless they profited directly from the coronavirus like they're probably doing pretty poorly and so they're not going to spend you know millions of dollars in infrastructure to like rebuild a dead industry that they can run that they think they run them better themselves like no what if what if it goes like super underground and hipster instead of like a speakeasy it's a movie easy you know you say the password and then the bookcase spins around and then oh look you're in a theater and you're gonna watch a movie on the big screen now yeah you can watch uh you can watch like little movies for you know you watch jingle all the way in yeah the make it make it really exclusive sandy make it like a special club that you can't get into which will make people want to come more oh of course Gavin Scott, the last time I went to a movie was the last day of school before winter break with my best friends. I'm glad that was my last time in theater. That's nice. Yeah, yeah that's a nice uh, that's that's a nice memory. I'm glad. I don't remember what the last movie I saw was. Same. But... I also can't remember how terrible is that. I mean, probably Infinity War, I think. Has it really been that fucking long since I've been to the movies? You mean Endgame? Yeah, Endgame, that one, whichever the last one was. Avengers, whatever. 12. Uh, but yeah, man. it's a war thing. Yeah, it's weird. It's, uh, you know, we're in a weird place. But I think that, like, number one, superhero movies aren't going anywhere. In fact, they're probably going to get more robust. Like, you're, you're yeah. going to get more nuance and more variety um, because, for me. because of the streaming services. Because they can afford to do it. Take more chances. Do more weird shit. We're giving Moon Knight a show. We're giving Invincible a show. Thing. Moon Knight's getting a show. Invincible's getting a show, but also Shang Chi's getting a movie. You know, like yeah. there's, they're trying different things. It's interesting. That new Shang Chi book is really good, by the way. It's like three issues are out right now, and Gene Lu and Yang is actually like super fucking killing that book. Cool. I, I got to pick that up. I forgot it came out. <laughs> which, which is a shame if you forgot it came out too in the chat. Check it out. It's really good. In fact, like after only three issues, it's like oh. So this is probably the best Shang-Chi book ever because once again, Gene Lu and Yang has made it deeply personal. <laughs> yep. I remember what my last movie of the theater was. Which was Bloodshot. Oh, right before the end times. Yes, I saw Bloodshot because uh, they sent me to go see it. I went to the, the, to the city to go watch it. Oh, that's nice. I, yeah, I no, saw it on streaming. It was one of the first ones that came out streaming. Yeah, yeah. They really threw their hat over the wall. Sure did. That in Trolls World Tour. I love uh, Ron Funches who's in that movie. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> Trolls World t- uh, Tour, the movie that, you know, ended the world because it was the right. last new movie. Yeah, it was. the No, and it did well. Like, it was like the last blockbuster. Yeah, because it di- then they put it on streaming, too. And it also did well because parents are like, oh, fuck, I got to put something on here to put the kids at ease. Trolls 2. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> But, Man, uh, the, Ac- yeah. the Academy Awards are going to be crazy this year when it's Trolls 2 and the Sonic movie for Best Picture. <laughs> yes, I didn't. See, yeah, the, they may just skip the Academy Awards. I, l- <laughs> I literally think they said they are actually going to skip it this year. <laughs> Good. May they skip it every year for real. Uh, but yeah, we'll see you guys next time with an all new episode. Of course, thank you so much for hanging out with us, and we'll see you guys uh, next time. Listen, you want to help us out? Give us a like. If you want to help us out even more, subscribe. If you want to help even more than that. You go to patreon.com slash compop and watch uh, the other show we make called one shot. It's only about 10 minutes, but it's still a lot of fun. Um, and you know, that's, that's it, I guess. Right. That's all we got. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot for hanging out. So long. Bye-bye.